Hey, I'm Zealous H Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo and welcome back to Africa. Today, we're going to be opening the African area to the public. So we need to join the African forest you see here onto our beautiful desert house that you can see here. And the way that we're going to do that is by building a habitat for the Somali wild ass to join the two parts of the zoo together. We also need to get some facilities into the African forest and make the gap between Hippo Falls and Gorilla Mountain rather more attractive than it is now. Let's get building. All right, here is where our Somali wild ass habitat is going to go. I've laid out some null barriers so we can see what sort of size we've got to play with. And the first thing we're going to do is get a fence in. Now, according to the Zoopedia, they need at least 1.25 meters of fence to keep them in. So we're going to lay this out with a couple of wall pieces just to see how big that is. So this is the height. And if we look at our little dude here, that's way too high um, for the fence that I want. It's too high for an adult to comfortably lean on. It's way too high for kids. So what we're gonna do is get this down to the kind of height that we want. So we'll move this across here and then sink it down a bit. And I think about there, be nice height for the guests. And what we're gonna do is sink the level of the ground in the habitat so that on the habitat side, this fence is 1.25 meters tall or just over. And on the guest side, it's the height that we just saw. So we use the terrain tools to do that. And that way we can have a nice height for the fence without the wild ass just jumping over it. We'll get it all to this height at the moment just to make sure that they can't get out. And then later on, we're gonna make the terrain much more interesting, have it higher at the back than it is at the front as we do in quite a lot of our habitats here. Um, we're gonna be using a mixture of proper fences and some of the desert rocks that we've already got in here to keep the animals in. So let's get on with making a fence first of all. Now in terms of the aesthetic here, what I wanna try and do is bring some of the look of the desert house to this area, but also be mindful of the fact that we're about to transition into the African forest. So as the habitat goes around, it's gonna go from some of the white North African looking styles that we had in the desert house, round to some of the new mud walls that we made for the hippo habitat. And I think that will tie things together really nicely. So we're gonna use some of the North African pieces here. I'm gonna use white, which is the color that we use for the desert house. Although later on, we'll make this look a little bit more interesting, get a few different shades in there. So it looks a bit more weather beaten. Um, it's a bit perfect looking at the moment, but I like the way the fence looks nice and simple. Um, so we're just gonna get this and copy this round to the rest of the habitat. I love making custom fences. They take so long to make and then to copy and rotate to get them all the way around the habitat. But I always think it's worth it in the end. This staff path that you can see here is the one thing that is preventing guests from getting into the African area at the moment. So the finale of this episode is gonna be removing that one piece of a staff path and replacing it with a normal piece of path so that our guests can finally enter the African area that we've been working on for the past six weeks or so. I've been considering whether to open the area or not for a while now, but I figure with Gorilla Mountain and Hippo Falls, and also the mixed species habitat that we've got in there and the exhibits. There is a lot for guests to see in here and the gorillas and the hippos especially uh, would be two of the most popular habitats IRL. So I think it's about time that we opened it. It's also costing us about $50,000 a year or something to run the area. And with no guests in there, we are getting no donations. So financially, you can see we've had $3 million or so for a long time in this zoo and we are now down to about 2.7. I think it's 2.6 as I record this. So something needs to be done. I'm gonna drop some mesh into the fences as well, just to make them a bit more solid, using the more solid looking of the mesh pieces, just to make sure that the nice wooden lattice work doesn't get kicked in by the animals or anything like that. Wish I thought of it earlier, because now we're gonna to have to manually add them to each piece of fence. But as always, it'll be worth it in the end. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more detailing on it as well, make it look a bit more solid and just make sure that this looks like a proper zoo fence. And while we do that, let's talk about the next Planet Zoo update. As I record this, I have absolutely no idea what it's going to be. Uh, technically, I don't even know if we're going to get one. <laughs> uh, I certainly hope we do. Uh, it should be out, I reckon, on the 12th of December, if um, the previous years or anything to go by. But I've got absolutely no idea what it'll be. Be interested to hear what you guys think it'll be or what you guys want it to be i'm going to be really boring and give the same wish that i always do that we either get birds or we get some tiny little primates for me to dot around the zoo i feel like maybe some sort of winter themed pack would be appropriate there are still quite a lot of fairly iconic mountain and tundra animals that we don't have in the game that I would sure would make a really good addition. But as always, let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see. It's always interesting to see what other people want to be added to this game. 
Back to the habitat, I've added a second layer of terrain halfway through the habitat so that it's higher at the back than it is at the front like we did in our mixed species habitat. Always a good idea to increase visibility of the animals and make the habitat look more interesting. And um, We're going to use some rocks here to join the higher terrain onto the lower terrain. We're going to use different rocks that we've used the last couple of times we did this just to get a bit of a different look. So we're going to use these savanna rocks and I like to put random rotation on and then every time you put it down it'll spin it into a different position and then you can choose where you want to put that particular rock like where you think that position is going to look best occasionally i'll also rotate them manually just to make sure that things sit together nicely that's starting to look good i want to extend this pretty much all the way along the habitat and then we'll have a little area in the middle where the ground just slopes down without rocks to make it easier for the wild ass to get there so we're onto the far side of the habitat now that's all the rocks in and what we're going to do now is use some terrain painting and then also build up the terrain using the flatten to terrain tool so that the terrain goes right up to the edge of these rocks and we get a really natural look there's almost like an overhang look with the shadows of the rocks and the way the terrain goes right up to them on top that i really like uh, you can see we've made a little sort of lane here where the ass will be able to get in nice and simple and then we're going to put some more larger rocks up against the mud walls here so that this side of the habitat just looks a bit more natural again in the way the, the ground will go into rocks and then different kinds of rocks and mud walls brings it together nicely and stops it from looking like the mud walls have just been sort of dropped there. And speaking of dropping things in, we're going to drop in one of our hoofstock shelters that we use throughout the zoo. I did some research into Somali architecture because I wanted to have something appropriate for their shelter rather than just using a generic one but sadly, due to the um, sort of political situation in Somalia and how long the various civil wars and other things have been going on there, the vast majority of any sort of classic architecture in Somalia has been destroyed, which is really sad. There's very little for me to work with in terms of getting inspiration. Um, I saw a few buildings and they do seem to have their own style. A lot of Islamic architecture with a slight North African style to it but a bit less decorative than it is in the more northern parts of Africa. But uh, I didn't really see anything that I wanted to use or anything appropriate because there was so little um, left, to put it bluntly. So I decided to just go with a generic shelter rather than make some sort of pastiche of North African architecture that didn't really fit. I always like to work from real life rather than just throwing stuff together. I think the zoo has more integrity that way. So we're almost done with this habitat, actually. It's nice and simple. What we're going to do is drop in some more grasses here want to get not too much um, obviously the ass will be grazers they're going to eat a lot of grass so not too much of it in here just a few dried bits here and there just to bring some variety to the habitat i want to do some more terrain painting as well we'll get onto that in a second we'll put some trees outside the habitat for a backdrop because one of the things i really want to concentrate on with this habitat is the view behind it so if we go down to the front here and then take a look, you can see the flying fox forest in the background. And I absolutely love how that looks there. I do not want to cover that up. So I've made sure when I put the mud walls in at the back and with the various trees and planting in this habitat that we don't spoil that view. And we'll continue that as we build behind this habitat to make sure that you can always see the flying fox forest from when you stand here. I just think it makes a really beautiful backdrop to this habitat. Now we've got these desert rocks here, which are part of the garden for the desert house so i don't want to make those really high so we're going to put some actual in-game fences in there for once um, you can barely see them they just make sure that the animals will stay inside the habitat and they look nice as a background item as well they're not too heavily featured or anything like that so we'll do what i said earlier and just make sure that each part of these fences is a very slightly different shade of off-white rather than it all being perfectly white it makes it look so much more realistic and lived in i'm also going to make the color of the plaster at the bottom of each piece of fence slightly closer to the color of the path so that sits in a bit more nicely we're going to put some more of these dead bushes along the back wall here again to make the mud walls sit in more nicely with the terrain and if we take a look you can see how we've preserved the view of the flying fox forest in the background there and then one final touch we're going to drop in the habitat board that we need for franchise mode and we're going to surround it with some of the twilight wood pieces colored to to match the fence i love doing this it's so simple but it really sits the habitat board into the habitat itself it makes it look like it belongs there while still doing everything we need for franchise mode and then we can take a look at the finished habitat these guys are really gorgeous i love their sort of combo of being half donkey half zebra i think that's a really interesting look and this habitat i think really enables them to display that 
it's nice and simple a lot of dusty ground and rocks sits in really nicely with the desert house behind it and gives them quite a lot of room to roam and trot about and they are really beautiful when you get up close to them we're looking back towards the desert house from this way i think it fits in really nicely and when we take a look from the other direction you'll see the african forest in the background there we go that is where we're going next to do a few last little bits and pieces so we can finally open it to the guests the first thing we're going to do is a franchise masters because there is something you have never seen me do before in this series and that is add a toilet into the zoo now it's not the most exciting of things but it is something that needs to be done in franchise mode and let's be honest even if you're in sandbox mode if you don't have any toilets in your zoo that's going to look pretty strange so what i thought i'd show you is how to use existing elements in your zoo to get toilets in wherever you need them with as little effort as possible so you can get something that looks good does the job so to speak and enables you to get back to doing something much more exciting very quickly the toilet block is one of the more bizarre items in the game it's unnecessarily tall like all the buildings in the game but then it goes nowhere it's just a doorway so you have to build the building yourself so what i've done is taken some of the log walls that we use to make the viewing for the gorillas this is a nice little piece and it goes really nicely with the building next to it and we're just going to use these to make a nice simple pretty much rectangular shape to hide the toilet block in and we'll use the toilet block itself as just the doors so we'll just copy this around here deleting the odd bit when it's not needed until we've got a nice rectangle to work with and then we'll drop the roof from one of the gorillas viewing galleries onto the top to use as a roof for here put in one of the arbor pieces that we just used in the Somali Wadas habitat and then the log floor from the gorilla and hippo viewing galleries and we'll join that onto the path using the African hut base um, that we've used quite a few times throughout this zoo. And already we've got something simple but effective that looks like it belongs in this area. That's taken about five minutes, if that. So we'll just do a little bit of detailing and then we've got ourselves a finished build. Let's put a toilet sign in, pretty obvious. And then we'll get some ivy and sink this into the logs so it looks like it's growing out from in between the logs rather than just being slapped on top of it. I think that looks really nice. We'll have a couple of those. In the gap between the toilet and the gorilla viewing, we'll drop in a tree fern. How gorgeous does the light look as that moves? We'll put an African Jeep in that just livens up the background a bit. We're going to use this elephant statue base from the Indian theme because it's got this really cool large wooden circle we can put that onto the wall and then drag the toilet sign on top of it and get that centered that looks really nice drop a security light on the top often see those on toilets and there we go we've got a nice simple effective toilet that we've made in less than 10 minutes the final thing we're going to be doing today is perfecting the rest of the African forest. So we've got this area which has nothing in it basically. So we're going to fill this with loads of jungle plants and the gorilla statue and just move in a load of the plants that we've already used in this area so it sits in nicely with everything else that we've done and just looks really natural this is the first thing that the guests are going to see as they come off the monorail so as they walk down from the monorail station they're going to see this area we want this to look really good so we'll move those signs around and recolor the gorilla statue until we're happy with it and then we'll move on to the last bit of path between the habitat that we just built at the entrance to the african forest so we're gonna put Put down some little decals just to meld this path into the scenery do a bit of terrain painting as well and then put some little scabola bushes in here and then we can finally replace the staff path that i mentioned earlier with a piece of proper path that the guests can walk on like so and we can declare africa open let's check it out Oh, I'm so excited to finally see some guests in here. It's been a long time coming. All that time that we spent placing paths and viewing galleries in exactly the right position is finally about to pay off. First guests are coming up to our mixed exhibit. That's our little baby Akaki. He was just born um, a few days ago. And we have a baby gorilla as well. How cute are they? This is the hippo viewing galleries that we built last week. I still love this habitat. Really happy with this one. You guys seem to really enjoy it as well. Let's take an overview of the whole area. So pleased with how this is coming together. 
depending on when the next DLC comes out, next week I think we're going to be building the huge mixed savannah exhibit that I've been talking about for a long time. If we take a look at where we are now in Africa, that area of just soil that you can see right in the middle of the screen, that is the path that's going to take people down to the savannah. That's where they're going to get their first view of it. Let's take a quick look at the Explorers Club. Hit the join button on the channel if you want to see your name here. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye.